Hello VC community. So what have I been up to uh, music wise? Well, first of all, this famous album, Laurie Anderson, Mr. Heartbreak. Now, if I remember this right, this was uh, Laurie Anderson's second album. And um, it has a lot of amazing people on it. But uh, in itself, it's a wonderful musical and lyrical journey. That's the sleeve. You can, uh, if you don't know this album, look up tracks like uh, Gravity's Angel or Sharky's Day. And of course, Excellent Birds with Peter Gabriel. Now, uh, the other reason why this is such a wonderful album is, of course, because uh, Adrian Bellew is playing all the guitars on it. Or, or uh, most of them, at least. And, um, and this ranges from uh, very interesting sort of spheric sounds that he produces with his guitar. And, uh, of course, on the other hand, uh, there are a lot of... Uh, so sort of noisy accents. Um, I mean, it's so funny if you look at Gravity's Angel here. There's sort of the the listing of the band, Laurie Anderson's band involved here. So uh, bass guitar Bill Laswell, guitar Adrian Bellew, backup vocals Peter Gabriel, drums David Van Tegem. and it's the kind of band I want. <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> So um, there is also William S. Burroughs on the album. Now a lot of musicians and a lot of bands have somewhere William Burroughs on their album. Mostly in that way that they kind of sampled his voice and put it into a song and then they not 100% honestly sort of include him in the, in the, in the description of the, of the musical outfit of, of the album. But this is different here. This is William Burroughs uh, uh, being in studio with Laurie Anderson and uh, speaking her lyrics. Yeah, so this this album is famous and uh, rightly so. So this is a uh, oh nice labels. So this is the stuff of legends, most certainly. And I don't need to say any more about it. Besides, I think most of you already know it. So, uh, but maybe not this one. <laughs> um, now, uh, the, the, the German speaking uh, people watching, they will laugh about this maybe a little bit. But this is uh, Einzelhaft by Falco. Now, Falco, for those who don't know it, uh, is probably the most famous uh, Austrian musician since uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart um, although sometimes it looked like he kind of felt that he was a reincarnation of Mozart and if not in musicality then certainly in uh, in attitude and appearance now this is his first album I think so very early in the 80s 1982 um, uh, and it's good music so um, I, I like it. I mean, of course, uh, he was a pop musician through and through and uh, very eager to become very famous. And, uh, and yet um, he had this ability to put interesting spins on his music. Uh, there are interesting sort of a, um, uh, touching points with uh, post-punk style of music, new wave style of music. Um, bordering on some drops of reggae and uh, <clears throat> some good guitar playing um yeah uh, if you never heard about Falco you can just uh, give it a try yeah that's Falco now uh, he was a quite a good singer I think, but uh, he had this obsession to introduce uh, sort of American rap style to German lyrics, and he did that uh, on every album. And of course, it sounds, in a sense, uh, completely different than uh, hip hop music, for example. But uh, he was probably one of the first who did that. 
so yeah, that's a good record. I mean, there are good pop records. Now, very different breed comes with this album. Those are the the dry helis. Now the dry helis are uh, really uh, a category of their own. Um, yeah, I'm really thinking about how to describe this band because that is not easy. Now this is, uh, as far as I know, this is a band from Germany, from Bremen. And uh, they did their stuff like mid 80s. But this is some really strong stuff. I mean, the, the music is uh, in parts um, very electronic. In parts sort of industrial, experimental. They had very provoking lyrics and uh, thematically this was this could be on the one hand very political or dealing with themes like Satanism and Sadomasochism. Interestingly, the first time I heard about them was in a book, if you believe that. And there was a book written by a man called Josef Dvorak. Um, and he wrote a book called Satanism. It's a very good book about Satanism, one of the best probably ever written. Um, and it's it's a book that sounds a bit different than one would expect. Uh, it's more like this fascinating uh, journey with a touch of gonzo journalism in it. But he... Now, first of all, Josef Dvorak is an interesting figure. Because he's an Austrian from Vienna and he was uh, one of the members of the Wiener Aktionismus. And Wiener Aktionismus uh, was a very progressive group of, of artists in the 60s to 70s uh, that really revolutionized um, performance art. So um, Dvorak was one of them, but later in the 80s he wrote this book and he wrote one page about the Dry Helis because he recorded a song with them. Um, so um, that's how I heard about them for the first time. I just wanted to share that with you. This little trifle. <laughs> yeah, I tried to describe them as best as I could, but uh, I don't think that words are enough. So the next one is a much milder potion. And this is uh, this record by Haruomi Hosono. Now the Mental Sport Mixes is uh, basically Hosono being remixed. Now the remix schedule is mostly dominated by Graham Messi, but there is a remix by The Orb, for example, and uh, who else? I mean, the, the vinyl cover is not very descriptive, but I do have it on CD as well, so it must be good. Uh, yeah, there are two remixes by Something Wonderful, not actually three remixes. Um, oh yeah, Tim Simenon of Bomb the Bass, and so on. Now this is good music. Um, it's not. It's not a. Even though it is sort of remixed into uh, into a uh, techno-like style, it is not. It is not a typical dance record. It's, you wouldn't, as a DJ, you wouldn't take it with you into a club. There is something rather uh, atmospheric and mellow about it. So it's it's a it's a, it has some really nice sort of tribal grooves, um, but it's more uh, an album for chilling, I would say, at least by today's standards of techno music. And what about this masterpiece, Beauty by Ryuichi Sakamoto? Now, Beauty was, uh, I believe, the second album that he recorded with his Neo Geo Orchestra, which was an outfit that I really liked, especially because of his uh, background singers, which um, which were a group of women that sang mostly in a sort of a Okinawa dialect um, in a very traditional style. They could also sing really good 
sort of typical pop slash soul background vocals that worked as well. But um, with most of the song, they sang sort of in this in this uh, folky Japanese style, which added a completely new feel and new dimension to this rather pop music design. Now, as you would expect with Sakamoto, there are a lot of guests on this album. There is uh, Yusu Nadur is singing there. The first song is sung by Jill Jones, and uh, it's called You Do Me. So that is nice, isn't it? <laughs> um, this is probably one of the best Sakamoto albums from this period, I would say. Uh, so there's a really high quality to this music and uh, a lot of really interesting ideas. And finally, something very classic, Betty Smith, Horses. So back to the mid-70s. Yeah, this is a wonderful album and it's a well-known album. I don't think I need to say a lot about this. Here, a version on Arista. Of course, Patti Smith group is uh, for another reason close to my heart and many of my countrymen would agree because uh, they had uh, Ivan Kral in the band, which is a countryman of mine. And I mean, uh, there are not that many famous uh, Czech-based uh, rock musicians in, a, in the canon of uh, rock and pop music. Uh, well, aside of Ivan Kral, maybe Jan Hammer. Someone else? Nothing comes to mind right now. But that was it anyway. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. And maybe there was something in this collection, in this little selection that you found intriguing and that will put you on the way to a new discovery. Wouldn't that be great? So, um, see you next time. Bye-bye.